So it's interesting that the alternate voices are glitching on their own. Like, if that is truly a, a unfiltered, unadjusted recording, which it, it seems to be implying that it is, the alternates' voices just glitch naturally. <laughs> And welcome to GT Not Live, for today it is Theory Crafting Day, a new episode of the Mandela Catalog just released not too long ago, and it is time for us to watch it and to live theory craft about it to see what more intrigue about this world we can decipher and figure out. But before we hop into what is undoubtedly one of the scariest uh, analog horror series currently running on YouTube, one of the biggest ones as well, uh, I wanted to talk to Ash for just a minute about favorite campy horror stuff. Because, uh, you know, obviously this is this is pretty spooky. Um, but when it comes to, like, scary stuff, I love camp horror and, like, stuff that's a little bit tongue-in-cheek and, and campy movies. Uh -huh. Do you have, you know, um, like, Birdemic was a big one that made the rounds a while ago. And yeah, Birdemic isn't really, like, Thanksgiving is a, is a classic. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, and, and then, of, of course, there's my favorite, which is Troll 2. Uh, yes. Which, if you've never seen Troll 2, it is an experience. Uh, if you've ever seen the, uh, oh my god meme, where the kid's like, they're going to eat me. Or they, they're eating her. They're going to eat me. Oh, my God. And they zoom in on his face. Like, that is from Troll 2, uh, which, spoiler alert, there are no trolls in the movie, which is, to me, the most ironically delightful part of the entire film. Like, there's a lot of great moments, but I think the subtlety of the fact that this is a movie about goblins but has been named Troll 2 is just, just hilarious. Do you have, like, favorites? I don't know. I don't know if I have any, like... When you say campy, you're not talking about, like, we are at a campfire. No, no, no. Like, uh, campy is the kind of, like, self-aware. Or, or, well, okay, so Troll 2 was not self-aware. Birdemic <laughs> was not self-aware. But, like, that, like, kind of so cheesy, it's good kind of thing. Or, like, so bad, it's good yeah. mentality. Uh, I mean, the true embodiment of camp. So maybe camp is, like, the wrong definition for it because like when i think camp uh there's the musical reefer madness which is was an off-broadway musical it was made into a showtime original movie it's fantastic it's actually the movie in my life that i've watched the most which says a lot because i don't re-watch re movies a lot of times but this is one i like showed everyone because i'm like this is so good that is the embodiment of camp because it's aware that it is a parody and it's it takes everything over the top and that in and of itself allows you to satirize everything that's underneath like but but like that kind of tongue-in-cheek awareness but in an earnest way is i don't know that's that's what i think about camp but like bad horror so okay fine pivot away ash let's do, let's <laughs> throw it all away so bad it's good movies let's move it to that so bad it is good yeah Mm. And for me, a lot of the so bad it's good movies tend to fall in the horror camp. Like, like I said, Birdemic <laughs> no, they, is so bad sure, it's good. Sure. Troll Two is so bad it's good. Hmm. I don't know. No, I, I'm blanking on it. Really? I don't. You, you strike me as someone who would have a good roster of these sorts of things. Oh no, I go. I thought I would too. But... <laughs> <laughs> but I put you on the spot, and I did not give you a chance to prepare. One of the ones that I was ho like. One of the ones I was hoping would be that is Morbius, but Morbius is just so mundane, it's meh. Like, like I wish it were worse than it was. You know, like, it's very forgettable. Like, uh, it's not particularly bad. I mean, it is bad. It's, it is not a good movie. It's very by the numbers, kind of boring, forget immediately forgettable. But I was hoping that it would be bad. Like, Matt Smith, who plays the villain, in, in the story, <laughs> like he understands what type of movie this is and he is camping it, he is camping it up with his performance oh, and his it. performance is so bad, it's good. Like, you know, I, it's been going around on the on tic, on the TikTok. It's been going around on TikTok and stuff like him doing like his like shirtless dance. Yeah, it's like, I'm a vampire dance, you know, that's hilarious. I love and him. He's great, he's great. 
And he's so over the top with it. That's like, okay, he gets what movie this is This is going to wind up being. Right. You know, everyone else is in a completely different movie. But he, I'm like, I want to watch his movie. Yes. That's the performance. Chew up the scenery, rip it to shreds, and make it fun and interesting. Yeah, that's that's for me. Um, I think there was a movie uh, my, my one of my former girlfriends actually uh, showed to me. Camp? It was about a musical theater camp called camp and it was the embodiment of like camp that's a horror film yeah, the musical sure. any any movie about a musical theater camp yeah that's terrifying <laughs> either that or it's it's rated in a, in a capacity that no one can see is rated x like there's some stuff that goes down at musical theater camps it's a psychological <laughs> horror <laughs> it's it's <laughs> like American Pie cranked up to 100, yes. but also with horror elements. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. As soon as, like, a tenor tries to take the soprano part, everyone in the theater is just, like, trembling. <laughs> oh, no. He's doing it again. Oh, man. It, no. He's got to show off his, his range, man. Every tenor is, is contractually obligated to show off their range and how high they can sing. It's a requirement of being a tenor's. I know. You got to respect them for how high they say. Like, I don't know what it is about ten tenors are like the high male voices, for those of you who don't know. And I don't know what it is, but like tenors just have this innate motivation in their brain. It's like, look at how high I can sing. Everyone respect how high I can sing. It's like, okay. They, you, hit a, you, hit a high, you hit a high A on a regular basis. Well done. We need to bring back the baritone. Baritones, man. That's, that's we need my to bring house. them back. We uh, need a revival era. I know. I do miss baritones in, in modern musical theater. It's like, okay, great. Every nice... lead male role is a tenor. We get it. I know. Like, no. It's it's because of the influence of pop music, actually. The, yeah. the infusion of pop music into the musical theater scene has pushed the male protagonist's vocal range up. I think it's also, you could probably, you could actually probably point to my guess is Spring Awakening mm -hmm. as the pivot point with that change. Cause that was the first one where it's like, the guys are like young male guys and they're, you know, they're cool and more poppy singers or like folksy singers, which pushes them up into more of a tenor range, which then led to Dear Evan Hansen, which then led to Next to, or Next to Normal was mixed in there. And you had this like era of musicals where it was all these like young 20 something guys as like the lead roles who were all singing kind of like pop or pop adjacent stuff, or at least pop infused stuff, um, which then kind of led to higher tenors. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. That's 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 my guess. If I were, you know, as someone who who's followed the history of musical theater, I'm trying to think if there was any pivot point before that. Yeah, around that area you had American Idiot, which was the Green Day musical. You also had... Uh, that was also a uh, Book of Mormon, which was more of a traditional musical, but the t it, you need tenors as the main characters to show their innocence, because that's the thing. Baritones are more masculine, stronger male leads, whereas tenors are more innocent male leads. Yeah. And so if you're having naive young kids, you know, they're, they're all 30 year olds. <laughs> like, it, you know, it's Broadway, so they're all being played by like 30 to 40 year olds. But right. like, you know, if you're having young male leads who are innocent and naive in the world, you need them to be high-voiced and young, which is projected through the tenor voice. Yeah. And anyway. then also, like, you have Andrew Randalls who can just go, like, super stupid high. Yeah. And, like, pushing it higher so that no one else can take the role. No, it's... it's it, the, and, and that's the other interesting thing, too, is, like, you have more and more parts in musical theater that are being written for specific actors and singers. Yeah. And so it's really hard for those shows to be revived or see longevity after that actor leaves because it's so specific to their individual vocal yeah. part, which I think is doing the shows ultimately a disservice. Like on one hand, you get like this amazing performance from like the original cast, but then, you know, it, it a lot of these shows tend to die on the vine. Like, you know, yeah. there's a reason why Oklahoma and South Pacific and Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat get recycled to death in musical theater circles because everyone can sing them or at least like you know the music is not so vocally demanding that you know uh, little timmy in sophomore year of high school playing joseph singing close every door to me 
when he doesn't make some of the notes, like it's not that bad. To this day, I, so I did Joseph and the Amazing Technical. It was my first ever show in high school. It was, really? yeah, I was I was one of the few freshmen who got in, which was a huge deal. Like that kind of solidified like the trajectory through, which was great. It was awesome. Uh, yeah, Woo! made it. Uh, but to this day, I still remember the like huge slate of colors because Joseph and the Amazing Technical, Technical Dream Coat is all about his like beautiful rainbow coat. And the, like one of the first songs of the show is literally listing off colors. And it's just a list of colors. And so it's, it was red and yellow and green and brown and scarlet and black and ochre and peach and ruby and olive and violet and fawn and lilac and gold and chocolate and mauve and cream and crimson and silver and rose and azure and lemon and russet and gray and purple and white and pink and orange and blue. What else could you describe with those lines? With those lines? Uh, any, literally any color of any object ever. I, 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 it's a deep roster of colors at this point, <laughs> let's say. Like, you know those movie, like, color palettes that people like to make? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be really, really zesty and fun if they made um, a movie adaptation mm -hmm. of Joseph and the color palette was those specific, like, hex codes. <laughs> the <truest laughs> Just hex those codes colors. And they have the hex codes floating around over top of each color. <laughs> It's amazing. I will say, when, when I see productions of Joseph, usually the, and even the filmed ones, usually they show like the coat and it's like patchworky. And there's a, like, a, the colors aren't pure. The colors are literally just like weird patchwork. You know, uh, this is an interesting fabric or whatever. I want to see a production of Joseph that accurately gives me all of those colors. It's like, Ooh. where's the ochre in that costume, costume design? I'm not seeing ochre. They're just giving lip service to the colors now. They're just doing like a shotgun spread at like, oh yeah, if I go to Joanne Fabrics and rip a couple of reams out of here, I'm sure I'll hit all the colors. No, where's the cream and crimson and silver and rose costume designer, Katie? Katie. Show it to me. Like if I was it's the It's always Katie. If I was the director, it is actually. Kate or Katie is a lot of the costume designers in my theater history. And if it were me as the director of that show, I'd be like, okay, where's, where's the ochre? Where's the peach? Uh, fawn? Did you look up the color co hex code of fawn? I bet you didn't. Show me that fawn. <laughs> and I'm not talking baby deer either, because we had that last time. <laughs> that was a thing. Hey, the Mandela catalog. Let's talk about this one, huh? Okay. Um, that was fun. That was fun. Uh, Mandela Catalog, volume 333. It was teased a month ago. I don't know. It was, it was teased a while ago, um, but it has released recently. And because this is one of those series, similar to the back rooms, where we kind of hop on the couch and react live to it. Oh, excuse me, I'm getting all burpy over here. <laughs> Pardon my gas. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, because we're doing live theory crafting, uh, we're here on the couch to, to react to this new one. It's a long one. It's 26 minutes, so we might have to break this up into two or skip chunks. We'll see. I, I'm going in blind. Uh, but basically, when last we left off, we had our two characters. Uh, one had gone down into the basement to be uh, contacted by, you know, these entities, you know, the man on the screen or whatever. And then uh, the other one kind of drove off in fear. I don't know if this is going to continue their story or if this is going to give us a different vignette in this world. So let's just hop into it. Like, you know, we'll, we'll join together into this. Mandela Catalog, Volume 333, which is half of 666. So we're halfway to the this, this sign of the beast, clearly. All right. Cool. We can reverse image search. Hopefully, maybe fi try to find what city this is. The structure and shape of the houses. I know this. this is supposed to be... Where, where, shoot, where, did, where does the Mandela catalog take place? Oh, I have to refresh myself. This looks very uh, uh, northeast. This this housing style, though, it feels very like European inspired, with the higher pitched roofs and uh, double stories. Whereas, shh, it's okay. It's okay. What's wrong, honey? Everything's gonna be okay. Just... It kind of sounds like your voice, Ash. Are are you acting in the Mandela catalog without telling me? If you are, that's awesome. Good for you. Get that bag. <laughs> You Matt, yeah, go so it. supportive. That no, this is how I felt when we were um, doing Edith Finch. <laughs> There's no need to cry. No, no. <laughs> the, Just, shh, shh. There's no need to cry. Yeah, that was me like patting like from a distance, being mm. like, "It's okay, Matt." Okay. No, just whenever Edith talked, I was like, "Is that me?" <laughs> I am seen. <laughs> like, oh my, like, where am I going? <laughs> 
Are you're, you breaking up my... Wow, you're, you're just fragmenting off into all sorts of different careers. I need to cry. Okay. These analog cords. Hey, hey, what's up? Okay, so we got Lin and Jude. He started crying again. Same time, I don't know what to do. I'm sorry, I, I, I just don't know how to help you anymore. Are you absolutely sure it's not the... No. No, the, I, I the man in the TV who kidnaps not. babies. I've had it unplugged for weeks now. Okay, so okay, so that okay, here we go. So that already tells us uh, that everyone apparently is aware of the TVs and the fact that the you know the the man in the TV comes in and like steals babies. Welcome to this universe. I guess that's one way to stop you know binging Stranger Things season four. Divorce agreement. Okay. Uh, the screaming's made between G Jude Murray and Lynn Murray. Okay. Parties were married on uh, 1990. Divorce is 92. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So, okay. Bless you, Matt. Yes. Bless you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. On uh, irreconcilable differences. No possibility. Okay, one minor child. Okay, so that... Good. We know everything we need. I mean, I guess I can come over and help you figure it out. <laughs> I guess. Are you free tomorrow night? Tomorrow night? You promise you'll actually come over this time? He's still your child too, you know. I swear to God, Lynn, if this is just an imaginary friend or something, I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> Man, Lynn, drop him like a hot coal. Oh man, I gotta deal with this baby. Are you sure this baby crying, you know, isn't just an imaginary friend? You know, this baby who is still, stopped by the sound of it, too young to have imaginary friends or imagination, period. Because babies aren't born with that sort of thing. Also, also, he's like, <laughs> dude, what a winner. Like, oh, he's crying. He's crying right now. Uh, they'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> doesn't help, doesn't help Lynn tonight. Champ, what a, what a champ. Hey, Jude, you're making it bad. <laughs> Make it better. <laughs> Make it better, Jude. Make it better, Jude. Marriage brought out the worst in him. Man, since since you've joined the live stream behind the camera, mm -hmm. the amount of Beatles references <laughs> through the roof to the moon. No, there was a severe lack and I needed to change that. No, oh, very much so. Yeah. <laughs> Dogecoin and Beatle references to the moon right now. All right. I, I, swear, I swear to God, Lynn, if this is an imaginary friend, and you're just wasting my time with this. Jeez. Do you realize how young he is? All right, presumably about like, what, two, I three years? It'll be, be so, it'll be so overpopulated. There will be wars, all nuclear explosions and everything. So I just tend to today's chores and let the good Lord worry about tomorrow. Sorry, I have to. I, I, that was scary and shocking. I think that it'll be so. It'll be so overpopulated. There will be wars. So what was it? So overpopulated that something about wars? Can you make it out, Ash? There will be wars. I don't. It's I don't so over. I think that it'll be so. It'll be so overpopulated. I feel like there's. There is so. It's so overpopulated. There will be wars. All news. Weird. Nuclear explosions and everything. I hate this. So I just tend to these chores. Eyeballs, man. If you want to make your your analog horror even scarier, just do like close-ups of eyeballs constantly. And let the good Lord worry about it. No tomorrow. one wants to get this close to an eyeball. Oh man, are we gonna see him? But what about us? We'll Classic Casablanca. Speed hundreds of telephone calls as well as television programs. This is great. Three through three. So I will say already there is a very, I mean, those scenes right there, the, the start of it was very much classic Mandela catalog, classic analog horror, still shots, you know, phone recordings, things like that. That was very cinematic in a way that this series hasn't been. So I'm curious where it's gonna go, but that was really effective. 
I, I liked that transition. That was really interesting. Very disturbing. Also, if you're weirded out by eyeball stuff, don't see the Italian film Zombie or Un Chien Andalou, which is a, a classic uh, French art film. Stay away. <laughs> not, not great. Did you ever watch those, Ash? As I rewind this a little bit? Lightning. Uh, no. Okay. But I did just remember a bad campy movie that I'll tell you about in the wrap-up. Here, no, tell me about it right now because I'm, I'm going frame by frame just because there looked like there was something back here before they cut into this footage, so I just want to double check. It's a horror movie about piranhas. Oh, is it called Piranha? I think so. Piranha 3D. <laughs> I, like, I remembered a thing. A horror movie about piranhas. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I was 11, and it was bad. Okay. But it was good. It was so bad it was good. Yeah. All right, we got Sergeant Ruth Weaver, Lieutenant Thatcher. Okay. Nothing. So we have some names. But lightning, to say the least. I learned a lot about myself, and uh, my colleagues in this room have learned just as much about me as well. I will never stand down for my base values, no matter how far up the ladder I What is up with his face? Right? Is he wearing a mat? What is that? Because that's so. This is clearly his head. This is clearly his body. Is he meant to be an alternate? Like with kind of the stretch? Like he has. If those are his eyes, his eyes. He looks like a mascot from like a like a Mickey Mouse cartoon or something. Hi guys! Wow! Look at me! I'm out to kill you, huh? And take your identity. <laughs> Uh, what? Because you see, like, he's got a nose in the place that, or like a nose for, a bump for a nose right there. So is, have the alternates just invaded the police department? Or is this him trying to, like, hide his identity? Right? I'm not making this, uh, this is weird to you, right, Ash? Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. Huh. I will never stand down for my base values. Okay, they're commemorating the promotion of Sergeant Ruth. Well, I may not be the most um, bespoken type. I protect and serve my city with pride, and I'm grateful to be rewarded as such. Huh. Thank you all. Sorry, I'm just reminding it here because this does he look normal? Am I just overthinking? Is it just because the quality of the footage is bad? Am I overthinking this? It's like... He doesn't have a mouth. And I don't think it's the quality of image. I don't think it's the quality of image thing. Weird. All right. Huh. Hello. No one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Good evening, officer. Uh, one of our students, Mark Heathcliff, uh, he's been absent Mark. for the past couple of days without any reason, no phone calls from parents, no doctor's excuse. And we don't have any apparent emergency contacts on file huh. for him. If you could have someone pay a visit to um, uh, the three, I'm and make sure everything's all right. It would be much appreciated. Oh, and if someone could try to get the contact info for whoever answers the door, that would be much appreciated. Uh, thank you. And have a nice night. Okay, so Mark, so we have the reappearance of Mark. This is, and it's unclear if this is all connected or not. Wait, they're welcome to the, that's welcome to the internet. That's great. Um, love that song. Uh, Mandela catalog. Mandela catalog. Let's just click here and then we'll do spooky, spooky stuff. Because um, the last one, last main one, was what was the this was what year what year was this one? Oh come on where is it 
Is it on the GPS? Shoot, I forget when they... I thought they said what year this was somewhere in here. And I, I'll need to double check what the, the timeline of all of this is. Because now we're rejoining... Again, Mark Heathcliff seems to be our like protagonist of the series in a lot of ways. Where he shows up in the early uploads. We see his death at some... Oh, here, 2009. Okay. So this is Winter Break 2009. I knew there, there was a, uh, a timeline here somewhere. So this is 2009. And if this is truly 1992 or kind of thereabouts based on the divorce papers that we saw with Lynn and Jude at the very beginning, which again, not 100% sure because we're cutting between a lot of material. So we can't necessarily say, oh, this is absolutely happening in 92 because we saw 92 in the divorce papers. But Mark Heathcliff is in school, which seems to indicate, you know, that this is happening much earlier in the series because um, we see Mark Heathcliff die. That being said, again, there's something special about Mark where we're, and we're trying to figure it out. I've hypothesized in past theories and I'm, I'm kind of holding out, you know, speculation about a couple things, right? Mark becomes the guy in the TV. Mark is somehow attached to a time loop in some way, like a past version of Mark is coming back to, to revisit his like younger self or Mark is kind of being abducted as a child to become kind of this like fighter against the imposters at some point. Um, it, there's, there's a, or the alternates at some point. And so there's a lot, Mark is very, I know, the imposter, it's sussy. Uh-huh. I. I know. Yes. I, the fact that it was the teaser episode for this mm -hmm. that we made the amongst us betwixt, betwixt y'all. Be and betwixt you're back with imposters. Mm -hmm. Oh, here, wait, where is he? Here he is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where's my sussy baka? There he is. Hey, 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 my little betwixt y'all. <laughs> There's There be alternates betwixt y'all. Okay. There do. But anyway, so Mark Heathcliff, obviously, so I think immediately if we are doing a, a theory, which we probably will about this installment of the Mandela catalog, there's a lot of content here. So there's probably gonna be a lot to pick through. Um, the, at this point, we're getting so much information about Mark. We really got to figure out kind of what the narrative arc of Mark is and like where he is actually fitting into this. Because he's also the one who's like, I had an, an intruder in my house visiting me in the shadows. And it's like, that poor kid. Who? Oh, what's that? Is that just spooky red clouds? It's very subtle. Right? Do you see the spooky red clouds? Is it spooky red clouds? Or is it a face or like entity? There's like green around it. Right. It might be something's like superimposed. Here, real quick. Oh, there's Photoshop. Then there's the FNAF teaser. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, exposure. Let's let's just see if there's any like interesting pattern there. And now it's just like random spooky cloud. Okay, just want to double check because it could have been like maybe it's an entity descending upon the house or whatever to to possess. Where are we at? Mandela. There we go. Boop boop boop. Huh. There's definitely a voice. Ooh, they got them Philips Hue rainbow lights going morning. out front of their house. Open up. No, it's the, obviously it's the police. Police, open the door. This looks like the Amityville Horror uh, House. Okay, Mark Heathcliff versus... <laughs> Heathcliff versus New Challenger. Altercation, evidence real. All right. See, really what they're just setting up, you know, what, what uh, the Mandela catalog is setting up is its version of Super Smash Brothers. Ooh. Super Smash Imposters. Super Smash alternates. Super Smash phonies? Yeah, the phonies betwixt y'all. Who, who would be in this game? 
Mark Heathcliff is definitely like the Mario of this franchise. Oh yeah. But you got like what was it, Judas? Last time you you have all these kind of like biblically inspired characters. You have elongated face ghost. Woo! TV man. Woo! You know, he could like take the TV off his head and smash you with it. He There's, uses like hypnosis. He'd have like some Jigglypuff moves where he like hypnotizes you and you're like, Woo! I think Jude should be a character and his final smash is that he gaslights you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jude used divorce papers. <laughs> He leaves the battle just outright. Jude from the opening of this is like, you know what? I'm Audi. <laughs> just lays down the divorce papers and walks off the stage. And then it just cuts to the no contest screen. Right, no contest. And he self destructs that he has off screen. Don't count because they were willful. He's like, I'm, I'm good, thanks, <laughs> man. We are coming up with so much <gasps> fantastic gaming content. I was gonna say this is this is definitely a merchandising opportunity. Here, here's the thing, right? Um, as we're recording this, and I don't know when this is actually gonna go live, but the Intruder plush is only available for two days. We already uh, this was two days oh, ago. Look, it's not an Intruder, but we have. This one. is not the Intruder plush. This is the Intruder. This is the art version. <laughs> Man, who doesn't want this to go to sleep with at night? His nose is very particular. This, this is so terrifying. But but anyway, they, they when, when it comes to merchandising, they've got, they've got this guy right here, the Intruder Plush by Mandela Catalog. Uh, but man, I think we're giving them a lot more merchandising opportunities than currently exist for them. It's very exciting times. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. No contest. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, hey. Hello. Oh. oh, it's Mark. Okay, so this is, to catch us up, this is Mark's supposedly dead body after he has, like, he basically was being harassed by an alternate for a while. This is, what, episode one or two of Mandela Catalog, or at least upload one or two, order is a different thing, but upload like two, I think it was. Um, and we see Mark basically going over to visit his friend's house, Caesar, uh, cause I think Caesar asked him to. He's like, oh no, I got this alternate who's following me now and won't leave me alone. I shut the door, I've locked myself in, it won't go away. He eventually opens the door, at which point the screen flashes, bad idea, Mark, and then it charges at you. And, and we're flashed with this screen of Mark with the gun. Um, but it's more of a top-down look, and so it's implied that he, you know, that he took his own life, uh, or that the alternate killed him as part of the altercation. Unclear. Uh, so it's weird that we're seeing kind of the aftermath of that moment his, right now. His body looks so unnatural. Like it looks flat. Like floppy flat. <laughs> floppy. Yeah. That rigor mortis hadn't set in yet, you know? Like, it looks like it's molding to the bed and, like, doesn't have, like, form. Sure. But I don't know. Maybe it's just the lighting. Or maybe it's just because, hi, I've never seen any of these videos before. Wait, you've not seen any Mandela catalog? No. Oh, man, you got your homework cut out for you then. I do. I do. Get ready to not sleep well tonight. Yay! It's, this, is, this, is a, this is a spooky one. Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay, Mark Heathcliff. Oh, so he was, okay, he was 17 years old. That's interesting to know. Because I don't think we had established his age at that point. Okay, so this is 92. Okay. Huh. So we're getting some solid dates there. Which again, we need to establish a timeline. Fired off multiple rounds. Which we hear in that initial video. We hear him, doo, doo, doo. and it's a bad idea, Mark. So again, Mark is really the, the guy who a lot of this mystery hinges on right now. Anytime there's TV or... It all, and if all of this is happening in 1992, that's also establishing that by 1992, everyone is aware that like this guy is attacking or intruding through the TV. So that's also good to know. Because I think we expected that... Because the last time that we saw, like, everyone's like, oh, the TVs are unplugged and whatever, 
was 2009. You know, where the the two guys are talking about it on their way to the house sitting. So the fact that even in 92, people knew that TVs were kind of a portal of entry. Holy Bible. Reassurances. God bless all. Hmm. You do realize you just got promoted, right? You don't have to work on this bullshit case anymore. Listen, I I got a lead. Okay? Okay. Got some evidence to review still. That's it. I'll believe it when I see it. See you later. All right. Lock the door on the way out. Okay. So those are our cops from earlier. Good to know. So is, is this Mark? Or is this the intruder? Because all, I mean, I, I would, it doesn't look like Mark, but I, we can always double check. This is obviously telling us that this is meant to be uh, an alternate, right? Unless they just did a very odd job of taking his fingerprint samples. You know, I, th I, think, th I think this is suggesting that he's got those elongated fingers or kind of like elongated body parts that tend to be associated with alternates. Those could just be his acrylics. Or they're his acrylics, yeah. Yeah, maybe he broke a couple nails in the altercation. Yeah. And there they are, darn. You know, coffin shaped. <laughs> coffin shaped. He just got him done, he needed the claws. <laughs> he liked to tap him on the desk. ASMR. Mm. Okay, so this is Mark. So wait, who is the first one's name then? We didn't see it, did we? Sorry. Oh no. No? Oh, it was just doorknob. I thought I saw a name at some point. So we don't know. This is this is the question mark, question mark, question mark. So it is an alternate, right? Because this is presumably the person that Mark got into a fight with. Right, and Mark's fingerprints are like in normal positions as opposed to like this like weird splayed out thing. I like how tiny his pinky print is. <laughs> He's right, got uh, teeny pinky. The teeniest pinky. Collected for investigation, okay. Prints present on reassurances notebook, collected for investigation, okay. Camcorder. Okay, all that makes sense. Nothing really there that I'm like, this is important. Points of interest. Okay, they're calling our attention to the camcorder for some reason. Tape found. Shadow under the door. Okay, and, and we've seen presumably some of that camcorder footage in the initial upload. Okay, so now we're watching it. <laughs> hmm. That's interesting. That's that's subtle. I like that. That was really cool. It's it's effective, right? Because it's like, what is it doing? It's not walking away. It's just kind of like lifting itself up strangely. It's it's a really cool way of like doing something unsettling, but that's very understated. Voices outside my room! He needs to open the door. No. <laughs> nah. No thanks. Don't I want any of your girls to go. going away. So it's interesting that the alternate voices are glitching on their own like if that is truly a a unfiltered unadjusted recording which it, it seems to be implying that it is the alternates voices just glitch naturally and kind of like uh distort naturally which is interesting again like that's that's an important detail into figuring out what exactly they are it's just after 
I'm nervous for the time. They're all too nervous about the time. You have loads of time. Let's see. So can it mimic other voices then? So it sounds like it can kind of like amalgamate a bunch of different voices. So can they all do that? Huh? All right, let's let's read reassurances, shall we? Let's see what we got. Okay, God loves me unconditionally. Always remember that no other, no matter the circumstances, God loves all of us simply because he has chosen to do so. He loves me when no one else loves me. I am at peace. Huh. And this is, again, this is Mark writing this because he, it was his fingerprints on here. Today is a day that I need God's love more than anything. I am alone and need to feel the warmth of his love and reassurance. I'm trying to see if there's anything in the margins, you know, as far as any other messages or things like that. Okay. Uh, and his love and reassurance, feel the warmth. Uh, my Lord, I'm afraid. I beg for your love and protection against evil. So now we're diving into the religious side of this. Okay, I have no choice. The cops never come for me. Nobody came for me. Whoever, whoever is reading this, please stop it before it does this to anyone else. Who have I been praying to all this time? Who have I been praying to all this time? Who have I been praying to all this time? So, and, and this is going, so Ash, since you're not familiar with a lot of this, this is all going back to an initial thread from upload one that's kind of gotten lost in the shuffle of the last, you know, like six uploads in the series or whatever. But this idea of who this false shepherd is, and there is debate or it's questionable who God is in this universe and whether or not, you know, angels and gods and things like that exist. Are they alternate? Like what are, are they alien imposters who are kind of like coming in to manipulate the human brain? Like manipulate humans into like worshiping them and, and welcoming them in. And so you have this weird dichotomy between this person on the TV who's coming in, maybe kidnapping kids. You have the alternates who work on behalf of someone. And then you have the, the false shepherd or the shepherd who also exists in this universe. So you have a lot of these like big competing forces operating here and here. And, and, I, I, and I thought because initial theories were all about like is is what everyone considers god an alien or is whatever what everyone considers god satan in this universe more recent uploads have really more focused onto the sci-fi elements of this of like what are the alternates they exist in these liminal spaces not liminal spaces they exist in these spaces kind of between universes and they're able to kind of phase in and out of dimensions this and that and so I'm like, oh, maybe they've kind of left that theme on the cutting room floor. But here we're kind of going back to it and re-inserting into the story. So it's, it's becoming important again, which is interesting. Two things. Yeah. One, your mic is really like in love with that part of your jacket. Okay. Can you scooch it just a little bit? Well, yeah. Just so he's not so rubby. Yeah, okay. Are you getting a lot of rubbing? I'm just, sorry. just a little rubbing. Okay. Okay. What's that? I think that's great, Matt. Okay. What's the other thing you're good? So you said two things. Yeah. Whenever you say alternates, mm -hmm. I just imagine like e-girls and e-boys. <laughs> okay. Why and it's really hard for me to, when you say alternates, not to imagine just people with like a lot of eyeliner and like chain mail. Well, instead of that, you should be envisioning people with like stretched, stretched out faces and, and mouths and horrific uh, bodily dis disfigurements. But can they wear eyeliner? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, I mean, in fact, I think many of them do here. Cool. What? You know, let's, let's see if I, let's, let's see if we can find one. Google. Here, I didn't need to do that. There, there is, I, uh, I kind of got eyeliner. Oh yeah. That might be the false shepherd. 
Uh, but then you definitely have, where's, where's our buddy? There's our buddy right there. That's, that's a pretty thick eyeliner. Yeah. A, th a thick one. See, they, they, they participate in alt fashion. <laughs> that's true. There he is. Yeah, oh, that, I don't. I don't like him. I don't like him very much. <laughs> no, you're not. He's not your friend. Oh, but is this the guy that the the plush is of? This is because he does have a very particular nose. This is the intruder. Yeah. So here, this is. Yeah. There you go. Uh huh. Huh. Okay. The intruder plush. There he is. Yeah. They they really got the nose. They nailed the nose. The nose is definitely the feature they want <laughs> you focused on right now. The intruder. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Secret lore. I should be actually here since we since we're stopped. Is there anything? Only plush. Download link. Email. To, okay, wait. Is there anything that says invite a horror beyond human comp comprehension inside your home with the intruder now as a plush? Don't worry about him stalking you in the night. He's able to sit in the same spot for a while. At least the last time I checked. Okay. I mean, if you're inviting him into your home, it's not really an intruder anymore. Right. It's, you're just getting a guy with a nose. A guy with a nose. Beware the guy with the nose. Who likes to sit in one spot? Who likes to sit in the spot? I understand that. Hashtag relatable there. Just sit in a spot, hang out. <laughs> well, since we got it pulled up, we might as well do this. Print screen. Let's see if we can do. Uh, overlapping text can sometimes be pretty difficult to decipher. I'm assuming this isn't going to give us a whole lot. But we were able to do it with like the Batman code and stuff. So yeah, we're not going to get a whole lot. I don't think to like isolate a line or two here. Yeah, we're not getting anything. I didn't think so. I just wanted to double check. My eyes are wide open. Wide open. The fact that they're showing a lot more of this page makes me suspicious. So again, brightness contrast. Let's do maybe contrast all the way. And sometimes like you can hide things. We did this for our own ARG where you can hide things so well that you have to crank it all the way up to 100% in order to actually see the thing. So like at 99%, it doesn't do anything, but at 100% you see where it like pivots. So I'm just curious. Nope, nothing on either side. That's exposure though, let's try offset. Yeah, nothing I guess, okay. Uh, one last thing I'm gonna do here is, let's do, what do I wanna do? Let's do black and white. Nothing. Okay. Uh, actually, what I wanted to do was let's do levels. Levels is what I want. So this crunches it down, kind of tells you where kind of your true black is supposed to start, where your true white is, where your midtones are. Yeah, where your highlights, your lowlights, and your midtones are. So let's crunch it back. Yeah, we're not getting. All right, I guess there's nothing there. I just, again, want to double check, but I see all this empty space there. It makes me suspicious. So. Okay, alternate report. Cesar Torres, 18 years old, may display inhuman features issued by the police. So they're letting everyone know that he is an alternate. Hmm. So it is a public thing where they're like, hey, these guys exist. Watch out for them. They will try to get you. So this is still, again, this is 92. So this is still early in the, the timeline, I guess, of this series. Uh, the recruiting, application. We've got some places. Take action, serve your community. Generic phone number. Okay. Area under 24 hour surveillance. <laughs> this is area 51. Gonna Naruto run over there. Okay, Murray versus question mark. Altercation. Hmm. Mr. D. 
Davis. Mr. Davis. All right, Mr. Davis. I understand that you were hoping that I would be able to recover the contents of all of the tapes that you sent in along with your request note. I was only able to recover maybe about two minutes from one of them. I'll be copying my recording of it onto this one right after this. I, I mean, I hope this helps you with the rest of your investigation. If you need any more help, you can call me back or just send me another letter and huh. I'll be waiting a response. Mr. Davis? Who's Mr. Davis? I don't, I don't, I feel like... Oh, hello. Tra tragedy mask. The night. Oh, no, the might of the subconscious. <laughs> Great. Hello? Stanley! Can you hear me? Yes, Stanley. It's fine, Arl. Oh, hello. <laughs> now, you may be thinking, who is this voice speaking to me through my television set? Well, let me introduce myself. I'm Stanley! My name is Stanley. It is very nice to meet you. I've, I've, are there parables written about? I feel like I've, I've, you know, come across a parable or two about, about the Stanley character. Little did we know that this is actually connected to the Stanley Parable universe and we're going to be now tasked with collecting Stanlerines. There's six of them and only six. Don't you look beyond that. Figlies. Uh, Stanlerines. Excuse me? Uh, clearly, you did not know that they rebranded themselves, Figlies. Stan Lorenz was the final decision made. Ugh. Yeah, G get with the times, Ash. Well, I like Figlies better. Well, great. Live your truth. But I'm living the actual truth, which is Stan Lorenz. Actually, I forget what, what the final one was. I don't think it was Figlies. I personally liked Figlies. I was in the Figly camp. I named that section of the video about Figlies for you. Thank you. And I you that. have the nerve. Wow. I'm just trying to be factually accurate, Ash. That's that's what I stand for. It's okay. I'm just I'm just trying to be a little more spicy. You are, you've been spicy lately. I want to be spicier. I feel like it's more entertaining. <laughs> no, you're good. Okay. Yeah, let's let's support each other with with love and acceptance. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Consider me a friend because I might consider you one too. Okay. So, I like having friends. What How many this? friends do you have? Ah, eh, not many. Like three. That's great. Do you count co-workers? Okay. Is co can I count co-workers? People who are paid to hang out with me? Because if so, a, a couple more than three. Mm -hmm. Woo-woo! You know a secret of mine? Mm hmm I can make friends appear out of thin air. Huh, that's... What was that? You want to know how? Sure, please. Well, I can tell you. But you have to promise me that I am one of your friends first. <laughs> this feels like a, a bad decision. Great. First, we must consider what makes up a good friend. Okay. What do they sound like? What do they look like? What color eyes do they have? <laughs> oh, good friends are only with blue eyes. Anyone that doesn't have blue eyes, absolutely not. Not a good friend. You can tell. Always remember the most important rule. If there is a new friend that lives in your head, it is best to put it is best to put it is best. Oh, they're just as scared as you are. Are you scared, Ash? Do I need to be concerned about your fear and well-being? I'm terrified, Matt. No, I'm so afraid. Oh, let me give you a ethereal smoke a hug. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm still scared. What are you scared of? I don't. I don't know. I just, I came into this universe screaming and I can't get out. <laughs> At least you've stopped screaming. At least you're keeping your, your, you know, existential dread and fear inside. So that way it's not impacting the audio quality of our, our episodes. That is the only reason why I'm not screaming. I appreciate it. You know, the commitment, the commitment to keeping high quality audio is very important here. Yeah. If you, if you came into work every day screaming, we might have to talk about <laughs> a lot of things. I feel like there would be a lot of conversations that would have to be had at that point. <laughs> How disturbing would that be, though? Just someone coming into work every day screaming. You don't you don't actually hear blood curdling screams on a very regular basis in your day to day life, or at least I hope not. I hope you're not. 
that's the no. thing. You have to learn how to keep it quiet. Good morning, Ash. Ah! Oh, okay. Good weekend I have it. Ah! Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll see if we're when we start recording a little bit later. Ah! No, as soon as the outro goes on, I like head first onto the couch and start screaming. And that the the material is actually really great for muffling it. Would you? Would you? I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, ooh, that's that, see, that's wow. See, that's what we should have used to advertise the Peepa Two Plush. It's great. great for muffling the screams of your existential dread. Actually, it is buy it. <laughs> Would Buy the merch. Will Gigachu be better? What's that? Will Gigachu be better? Oh, Gigachu might be better. Hold Where's on, Gigachu? let me get him. Yeah, get, hold up. Let's 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 test out the levels of muffling. I will say our betwixt y'all, not great, not great. Oh, pretty good, pretty good. Oh, Gigachu, here we go. Okay, here's Gigachu. How's that? I like that. Was that <laughs> thumbs up? <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't really me holding back either. Like if I were to yeah, do no, like I, a full I, on scream, like I I went, I like I went for lot. it. Like Actually, all the other ones, I'm kind of like held back. Look, this is like. <gasps> <laughs> I could bring it all the way back to the callback joke of. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. And then that was in. that was great. Yeah. That was great. Troll two. I, I kind I of want to try it. Little did you know that I was act actually one of the actors in Troll two. For real. Yeah, I was the guy who pissed on hospitality. Wow, dude. I don't like saying the word piss. Don't use the word piss. That's a bad word. But I just I'm quote. I don't know. I treat it as a bad word. But I. Uh, but anyway, for those of you who don't know, that's a line from the the movie where he stands up on a table and urinates on the dinner to prevent his parents from eating green food that'll turn them into troll food. You know, as you do. Yeah. Yeah, as you do. All right. So, <laughs> with that screaming exercise out of... Do you want to scream? Would you like to scream? Can I? Of course. Please. Okay. Please. You, 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 oh, oh. oh, oh. Drop uh, mic. <laughs> Drop mic. Sorry. You've, you've come all this way to bring oh. Giga, Giga Chew. Please. Give Thanks. us give us a nice scream. Okay. I should turn off the mic. I feel like this will be loud. No, no, no. Oh, wow. Really? Louder than I was? I don't know. One I of mean, the few times someone has actually challenged me to be, you know, to be louder than I am. In, here's the thing. In a thing that we've produced. My voice is naturally just very high. Uh-huh, sure. Some people think like I'm faking it. Like a tenor. <laughs> <laughs> or a soprano, but you live your dreams. <laughs> live, live, live your dreams. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm scared. Okay, you got it. No, let loose. Okay. There. So one time when I was in, in summer school at Northwestern uh, University, I took like a summer class there for uh, creative writers. And You're wild. All the, all the normal classes that weren't like touchy-feely creative writing based uh, had a, like final exams. Like it was a, a condensed year of lessons all condensed down, right? And so the, everyone had final exams and final exams uh, were really stressful for a lot of people. So one of the structured activities Yes. Oh, do you know this one? Yeah. Did, did you do this? One of the structured activities that they program that the program did for us was like at this hour of this day, everyone goes outside and does the primal scream. Yes. In which you just like scream for as loud as you feel comfortable. And then after those five minutes were up, you went back inside and like continued cramming and being full of anxiety for your tests. Right? Did you, yeah, that. is that what you knew I was going with that one? Yeah, I've seen videos of it, and I've always wanted to try it. Here you go. Well, do it into Gigachu. Okay. This is your chance. Can someone please promise me you'll use this scream and, like, some kind of horror thing so can... that I don't feel completely silly? This is content right here. that You don't have to feel silly. This is great. Okay. Also, do it for yourself, Ash. Okay. Let, let it out, man. Okay. How often in your day-to-day -day life do you get to scream as part of work, too? <laughs> like, it's a, know, a weird job. A it... weird job. This is whack. Go go for it. Okay. Whack in a good way, right? Not whack oh, yeah. in like a bad way. Whack positive. Uh, whack. Po okay, positive whacking. <laughs> we don't want any negative whacks around here. Oh, go for gosh. it. Okay. <laughs> that was. You have a really good horror scream. Thank you. Can someone please use it? That was really good. Thank you. I also like that you immediately started like got self conscious and started laughing about it. <laughs> it was. I mean, I just. I'm like, oh, that's silly. <laughs> 
<laughs> you sound like now the you're like rolling girl around. that dies first. And now you're rolling around with Kikachu. <laughs> that <Wee>. was... <laughs> You, you know that was, you were you're like a scream queen status right there. I'm a scream queen. You could be a scream queen right there. Really? That was good. Thank you. That was a really good scream. Thanks, Matt. I would absolutely clip that and put it into something else. Please. I also kind of worry what it sounds like without it being muffled. Oh yeah, you'd probably your ears would probably bleed. I, I, I feel like the neighbors would actually probably call the cops on us or something. Yeah, there's about to be another dead body in this house. <laughs> another. <laughs> So anyway, <laughs> hey guys, and with that, uh, we'll finish theorizing about the Mandela catalog next time. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, remember, <laughs> on, on that screaming note, and as always, remember, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video, a video for you. See ya!